Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's once a, a, a great privilege and honor uh, to share the Word of God with you this morning. Uh, for our family in the audience, I was expecting a little bit of smaller crowd, Richard, uh, due to the holidays. And for those online, a warm word of welcome to everybody and for each and all. And my prayers this morning that you would also uh, benefit greatly from the message that I'm about to share with you, just as I've been uh, benefited from uh, preparing uh, the study from, from God's Word. I think we all missed Derek, but I think I missed him the most this week while I was uh, looking for a subject. You know, it's, it's always the most difficult thing to do. You know, <laughs> you know over and above standing up here and, and not making a fool of yourself uh, to, get, to, to, to get the topic, uh, I, I think it's the most difficult thing to do. Because once you get the topic, I, I, I used to then you know, overprepare. Uh, I, no, I, I normally got material to stand up here and, and, and speak for a week because I've got so much material. I, I, I get so involved in, in preparation, uh, uh, Rich. You know, I found myself at, uh, in the evenings, 2 o'clock in the morning, I'm still looking at this and still looking at this. And, and I don't stop, and at the end of the day, I, my dad always says, you, you, you're overprepared. You've got way too much uh, material, you know. And uh, I remember his notes, uh, and I, 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 I still got his files. And I go through, through them from time to time. And it's amazing with time. You only had about three or four scripture written down on a small little card, and he would stand up there, and preach for 30 or 40, 40 minutes, not repeating himself that much. But when he got older, he started repeating himself. So it's holiday times, and I'll try to keep it as short as possible, you know, if we've got maybe some plans, uh, Jeff to Bry, got uh, time to prepare the, the fire and so on. So Paul writes to the church in Rome, and he explains why it is so important to preach and to share the word of God. And I'm reading Romans 10 verses 9 to 13. And he says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, and he quotes, he says, Everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Then Paul carries on and he asks three very, very important questions. He says, how then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? The second question he asks, he says, And how are they to believe in him of whom they have not heard? And lastly, he says, And how are they to hear without someone preaching? This faith Paul talks about, he can carry on in verse 17 and he can explain to us where this faith comes from, Jeff. He says, so this faith I'm talking about comes from the hearing. It's by you guys hearing the word and that hearing through the word of Christ. Adding to this, I think it's important to also add the words of the Apostle John in uh, John 12 verse 47. And we need to understand that clearly that the words of Christ were not only his own words, Richards, but, but it was the words of his father that sent him. John 12 verse 47 Jesus says, through the pen of John, he says, If anyone hears my words and does not keep them, I do not judge him. For I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. He carries on, he says, The one who rejects me and does not receive my words, he has a judge. And the word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. For... I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me has himself given me a commandment, what to say and what to speak. In verse 50 of chapter 12, Jesus says, And I know 
that his commandment is eternal life. What I say, therefore, I say as the Father has told me. You know, through my life, when speaking to friends and family and people about the gospel of Jesus Christ, I many times heard the lame excuse that the Bible teaches that we must not judge. And it's true. We should not judge. But clearly, Jesus speaks through the pen of John. He says, I'm not here to judge you. But the words that I have spoken, they will judge you in the last day. Now, this morning, I've got some good news. And I've got some bad news. The good news for those who obey the gospel of Jesus Christ is, is that today you will hear the words of Jesus Christ. And for those who refuse these words, I've got bad news. You have also, and I have also heard the words of Jesus Christ. Today, as every other first day of the week, Derek or one of the brethren gets up onto this podium and we preach and we share the word of God. But more about this a little bit later on. The words of God will fall upon your ear this morning, and that brings a re responsibility and also a very important question. What will you do with this man, Jesus? Before I carry on uh, with this topic, uh, I need to stop and reflect on last Sunday's sermon uh, by Brother Zain that he brought to us. Zane, thank you so much. Um, your thoughts are very close to my heart, and I agree with you fully that spiritual uh, maturity is a serious threat, or immaturity is a serious thre threat for Christians, as well as congregations all over the world. You know, I've seen that the religious world makes the blood of Christ cheap by advocating and preaching health and wealth instead of sacrifice, responsibility, and obedience. The religious world teaches that God is a sort of a genie locked inside an oil lamp, and all we must do is to wrap the lamp, and magically, the genie will appear to solve our problems. The world sees God as a slave or a helper to solve the self-inflicted problems that were, in 90% of the cases, caused by their own sinful desires, actions, or habits. But being spiritually mature, Zain, we understand the scriptures that God is spirit, and we must worship him in spirit and in truth. We understand that God sent his son, and his son was obedient until death to save our souls. That is the end, period. Paul writes to Timothy, and this is one of my favorite passages. First Timothy Chapter 1 and verse 15 and 16, Paul writes to Timothy and he says, This saying, this is what I'm about to say, is trustworthy. This is the truth you can trust this, Timothy. And it's deserving of full acceptance. Not partially acceptance. Don't, don't, don't accept a little bit what I'm about to say. Everything I'm going to follow now, you can. it's trustworthy, it's the truth, and you can accept this. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom... I am the foremost. Verse 16, he carries on, but I received mercy for this reason, of whom I am the foremost, uh, as, uh, uh, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. Together with this, two, uh, Peter writes in two, Peter uh, chapter 1 from verse 3, he says, his divine power has granted us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him, Christ, who called us to his own glory and excellence, by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises, so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in this world because of sinful desire. And to me, these two passages is a summary of spiritual maturity. Sorry, Zain, I was not trying to repeat your, your, your sermon. It's just a topic very close to, 
to my heart. For those who don't know, uh, <laughs> sorry Zane, uh, Zane is also an aviator. <laughs> and that's per perhaps why uh, the very first time I shook your hand, uh, Zane, I immediately felt and I knew there was something special about this man. You know? <laughs> For the past 119 years, you know, pilots have been looking down on, down on man, you know, so I, I immediately uh, saw something. I hope you and I will find the opportunity to share some flying stories because I am banned from uh, mentioning anything related to, to aviation from this, <laughs> from this uh, platform. I think it's so unfair. <laughs> well, well, Derek is not here and also Don is not here. And it's, and it's only Stephen, and I don't know, you like aviation stories, Stephen. Uh, here we go. <laughs> so yesterday was the anniversary of the first ever powered flight. On the 17th of December, 1903, the Wright brothers took off from a small airfield in uh, North, Cal North Carolina called Kitty Hawk. Uh, the first flight lasted, who can guess? Anything? Five minutes. Five minutes. Forty-five seconds. Forty-five seconds. Twelve seconds. And and Orville travelled a record distance of thirty-six meters. And the best flight of the day, uh, with Wilbur at the controls, covered two hundred and fifty-five point six meters, for a record time of fifty-nine, fifty-nine sec seconds. I often think if they knew at that point in time at that particular day that only in 119 years' time aviation would have been advanced to where it is today. You know, the biggest aircraft ever built weighs, grows up, weighs 640 tons, the Antonov 225, which you, we all know what happened to that thing. Some carrying maximum passengers of 8, 853 pa passengers on the 380, on the Airbus 380. Some traveling more at twice, of the, twice the speed of sound on the Concord. And some of them even reaches <clears throat> the very edge of space in the SR-71. And I'm not talking about rockets. 109 years compared to the history of man is a drop in the ocean. And that brings us to the topping of my message this morning. And that is time. Can you believe it? Harrison, the... <laughs> With the, with the presence, uh, there's only 13 days left until t uh, in, in, in this year, uh, in 2022. 20, and then we'll be facing a brand new 2023. I remember as a child, it felt like time was standing still. You know? uh, and maybe for the, for the young people in the audience, it's still time is still standing still. You know, we, we, we live from holiday to holiday. I, 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 can, I, I will always remember Reg. We, we couldn't wait, you know. And <laughs> Holiday, see, Margate. You know, that was my, my dad's favorite place to go, Margate and Amundsen Toti and those places. But we, we couldn't wait, and we, we lived that whole year. We couldn't. Even in our normal day, you know, um, from, from Monday to Friday, that, that, that Friday was for each. When I, when I went to high school, I was a little bit of a rebellious uh, uh, teen, teenager or, or young man. And... Even that four periods before break was, was felt like eternity. I just want to get out of the class. I, you know, I, I, wasn't a, I wasn't a good student, but later on, I paid the price for, price for it. But, but time, when you're young, stands still. But when we get older, we realize that time flies, flies by. The hours don't have enough minutes. The days don't have enough hours. The weeks don't have, don't have enough days. The months don't have enough weeks, and the years don't have enough months anymore. It just, with a blink of an eye, it passes by. In 17 days' time, it will be Daniel's first birthday. A year has gone by. And we can't believe it. The Word of God also speaks about time, and my message this morning deals with this question. How do you use our time? Why do, how do we use our time? Now, in some applications, when you apply for 
something and you need to enter the date, uh, uh, mobile apps, uh, Richard. They, they, they've got this uh, sort of a, a wheel that you can scroll up and down uh, to select your year of birth and the date and the month, uh, Stephen. <laughs> now, you know what's scary? The other day I was busy <laughs> doing something and I see there's not, not, not many... There's not many years left Yeah, I can't scroll <laughs> up much longer. You know, as a young man, you, you start off beginning here on, on top, 19, 1995 or 2010 or whatever, you know. Going back to 1964, there's only a few. Uh, you know, I, I, I had to scroll quite a, quite, quite a lot to get to my year. And, and then you start realizing, you know, time, time doesn't, stand, doesn't stand still. Time is a commodity that every human is blessed with. No matter, okay? Irrespective of your gender, your race, your religion, all people are blessed with time. Some little, some more, and some a lot. Each day on our planet, Earth consists of plus minus 24 hours. It's actually 23 and 56 minutes to be exact. Uh, Zane, back to the aviation. Uh, to be exact. If we have lived on Jupiter, our days would only be 10 hours long. And imagine how fast time flies on, if we had to live on, on, on that planet. But if we lived on Venus, uh, one day would be 3,852 hours long. So that actually equals to 243 days. So I think that would be a, a nice place to live. Time wouldn't fly that, that quickly. Paul writes to the Christians in Ephesus and he says, thanks Andre for reading that for us. He says, look carefully, then now you walk, not as unwise, but as wise. Making the best, and I, and, and I like this international standard version better. He says, making the best use of the time because days are evil. Making the best use of the time. So what, it, uh, what it's implicating is that we've got a choice uh, what to do with that time. Everybody young has got time. You've got time. You've got 24 hours. I've got 24 hours. Scott got 24 hours. We've all got the same opportunity here. But it depends on you and I what we're going to do with that 24 hours. And this is what Paul is saying here uh, to the church in Ephesus. He says, making the best use of the time because they, days are evil. He says, therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of God is. Now, Paul mentions a couple of things here I think I want to highlight. The first thing he speaks about unwise and wise. So this choice that we are executing uh, 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 um, will have an impact on us being wise or uh, unwise. We have a choice how we use the time that we do have because we live in days that are evil. And lastly, he says that we are fools if we do not understand or if we don't know what the will of God is. And this is a reason why we are instructed to preach and to study the word of God so that we can understand what the will of God is, Rich. If we don't know what the will of God is, we can't please God and then we are considered fools, and we know that the definition of a fool is somebody that is without God. Okay. Choosing how we spend our time is something we seldom actively think about. Over and above the fact that we've got our daily schedules and school and work and play, we don't think about that actively. Says, you know what, I'm going to spend Bible study now. You know, it, life, life goes on. Now, we're all caught up to a lesser or a greater degree in this thing, we call the rat race. You know, we, we get up, we go to work, we go, get home, we eat. We watch TV, we sleep, we get up, we go to work. We get home, we eat, we sleep. We get up and go to work and you know, you, you know the drill. We seldom sit down and cons consciously think about how much time we have left to understand or get to know what the will of God is. I'm not sure why, but a, 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 a watch, the physical the, the wrist watch or these uh, pocket watches you get, is, is, is quite a popular gift, especially in, in, in earlier generations, uh, 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 I think. I remember, you know, the, the, my previous generation, they, they, they attached a lot of value on, 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 on pocket watches. And those were normally handed from one generation to the other. You know, the father would give the pocket watch to the son and, 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 so, and so on. 
It, we all know that a watch is a very delicate and also a very precise instrument. Okay? I think one of our, or not, I think uh, our richest person in South Africa is, is quite involved in, in expensive, uh, uh, in a watch company, uh, uh, watch company. I had a look, and the most expens expensive watch that was ever sold was a uh, Patek Philippe, Grandmaster Chime, and it was sold for, guess how much? Dollars. Scott? Three million. Three million. 31 million US dollars. That's almost 550 million rand for, for, for one watch. So that is the value people put on, 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 a, on a clock or on an instrument. We give our children watches from an early, early age as gifts. And I think we hope that they will spend it wisely, that this watch will help them to manage their lives and spend their, their time more wisely. Time is something we can never get back. We can't turn back the hands of time. You know what? We can set that clock. Uh, we can take the batteries out of our watches, but it does not mean that time stands still. Time will continue to pass us by. Time, uh, Zane was talking about a funder that pulled out of his business deal last week, and yes, Zane, I know exactly how you feel. I've been there too, a couple of times. But money is something that we can lose and something that we can get back. To a certain degree, we can manage our health and we can choose our friends. Uh, we can choose our spouses the first time. <laughs> But the, but the minute that's passed and the day that's gone, those are gone forever. We can't get those back. Even if, we have the, if the, the richest person in the world can't buy one second back out of his life. It's gone. It's finished. We manage our life on a clock. By time, we schedule meetings on the hour. We keep diaries. Everything has a start and an end time. Even our worship service this morning has got a start and a and in time, and it seems to me that I'm going to exceed that a little bit that I plan, plan to do. The psalmist has this to say about time and how much time is allocated to you and to I. It says Psalm 90 verse 10, and we know this by, uh, very well. The years of our lives are 70 or even by reason are strength 80. Yet this span is but a toil and trouble. They are soon gone and then we fly away. For the young people listening today, trust me. Time goes by rapidly. I saw an illustration some time ago about a dad, and he was uh, about 30, 30 years uh, old. And at that point in time, he took a big uh, a glass jar and he filled it with 50 colorful marbles. You know, these uh, thing that you played with as kids, uh, Yanni? Those little glass, glass ollies, you know, marbles. I'm not sure if you know what that means. The younger guys. I, I don't think the younger guys... Know what an Ali is, or a marble is. But he filled these small little pellets or glass balls or whatever. And he, and he, and he, and he, and he placed this glass uh, uh, jar on top of the fireplace next to Grandma's. <laughs> That's just cool. there. And he, and he, filled them with, he filled them with these 50. And it was filled right to the top of this glass. And each, every year, and New Year's Eve, he would take out one of these uh, 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 pellets or these marbles and he would throw it away. Because obviously, he, had, he reckoned, according to, uh, according to uh, the scripture, the psalmist, he obviously read it somewhere that he's got 80 years to live. So he, was 30, he added 50 balls, and each year he threw one out. And as that jaw got lower and lower and lower, his children and his wife loved him more and more. <laughs> because they could see, you know, time is, time is, run, time is running out. So for the, for the younger people, I think we all should get a glass jaw. Because we don't realize how fast time is passing us by. As each old year eve, as I said, he would take it and throw it away. I think about that illustration a lot and wonder what I would have uh, asked my dad if I could see him one more time. I think we all need to keep a jar of time. Somewhere we can all clearly see it becoming emptier and emptier, emptier each year. 
Ecclesiastics 12 verse 1 says, Remember also your creator in the days of your youth before the evil days come and the years draw near on which you will say, I have no pleasure in them. We all know that we can basically divide time in three periods. First of all, the past tense. This is gone and can't be brought back. All the money in the world can't bring back time that is past. It's like water under the bridge. It's the only good thing about the past is that we can learn from it. We can learn from our own past mistakes and our own past successes. But we can also learn from the past mistakes and the successes of others and apply that in the present, in, in the present time, in our own lives. Paul writes in Romans 15 verse 4 and he says that, For whatever was written in the former days, whatever you experience in the former days, whatever you read from the Bible in the former days, it was written for your instruction that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures we might have hope. Secondly, we have the present time. This is today, and this is what Paul advises us that we must do wisely. To spend the time we have today, today in a wise manner. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 6 verse 2, he says, Not only to the church in Corinth, but also to you and me today. He says, Behold, today is the day of salvation. <coughs> the only time you and I have is now. If you feel to love more, do it now. If you feel to study the Bible more, do it now. If you feel to pray more, do it now. If you think to stop sinning, do it now. If you feel to give more to the Lord, do it now. If you feel to be kinder to people, do it now. If you think to tell your friend about Jesus, do it now. And if you were thinking of becoming a child of God, do it now. Lastly, the third tense is the future. And nobody is guaranteed the day of tomorrow. Proverbs 27 verse 1 says, Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what the day may bring. James also warns us about this. James chapter 4 verse 13 to 15. He says, Come now, you who say, Today or tomorrow we will go into, uh, into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life, he asks? For you are a mist that happens for a little time and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this and do that. You will recall Paul appearing in front of Governor Felix in Acts chapter 24. And from verse 24, Luke writes and he says, After some days, Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, who was Jewish. So I presume, uh, 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 Reg, that Felix wasn't ignorant. You know, he was well informed about, the, about Jesus. He, he, he knew him by heart. I'm sure that Drusilla nagged him about Jesus and the prophecies that was written in the scriptures. So he knew. And he sent for Paul. And heard him speak about the faith in Christ Jesus. And verse 25 Luke says, he says, And as he reasoned about what? Righteousness, about self-control, and about the coming judgment. Okay? Felix was alarmed and he said, Listen, go away for the present, Paul. When I get an opportunity, I will summon you. <laughs> and isn't that the lives of so many people today. Go away for the present. Go away today. When I get an opportunity, Reg, I will summon you. I'm not sure where you are in your relationship with God, but I know where I am. The fact of life is that we all have limited time. We don't know how much time is left. We don't know what the day of tomorrow brings or if we will have the tomorrow or the opportunity to, to answer the gospel call. <coughs> our days and our ties, times are numbered. The writer of Hebrews put it in this way in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27. And just as he appointed for a man to, to, 
And just as it is appointed for man to die once, and after that comes the judgment. That in fact, but that's a fact. But the uncertainty is that no man knows when that day will come. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 25, verse 46, and these, and he's talking about the unrighteous, will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The word of God is filled with true and everlasting promises. And in closing today, I want to go back to the gospel of John. In preparing his apostles for his departure, Jesus speaks to them and to those who believe, <coughs> excuse me, and his words. And I'm reading from chapter 14, verse, verse 1. He said, let your hearts <clears throat> Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you that I go to, I, I would have told you that I go to prepare a place, or would I have told you that I would go prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself so that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, in verse 6, I am the way, and I am the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The following story was told by Billy Graham at the age, advanced age of 92, while he was struggling with Parkinson's at a, at a, at a dinner party. He said, I'm reminded today of Albert Einstein, the great physicist, who once traveled from Princeton in a train. When the conductor came down the aisle, punching the tickets of every passenger. And when he came to Einstein, Einstein reached into his pocket and he could not find his ticket. Uh, so he reached into the trouser pocket and he also he couldn't, and it wasn't there. He looked into his briefcase, he opened his briefcase, but he also couldn't find it there. And then he looked on the seat behind him and underneath the underneath the benches and he still could, couldn't, find his, couldn't find his ticket. And then the conductor said to Dr. Einstein, he says, I know who you are. We all know who you are. I'm sure you bought the ticket. Don't worry about it. Okay? And, Ein, and Einstein then nodded appreciatively. The conductor continued down the aisle and he punched the other passengers' tickets. And as he was ready to move through the door to the next carriage uh, to the next car. He turned around and he saw that the great phys physicist was down on his knees crawling underneath the seats looking for his ticket and he rushed back and he says, Dr. Einstein don't worry, I know, I know who you are. You don't need a ticket. Okay? I'm sure you bought one. And Einstein looked at him and said, young man I too know who I am. What I don't know is where I'm going. So this morning, God's word comes to you and to me, and that is both a blessing and a curse. Some may ask, how could this ever be a curse? You see, for those who hear and obey, it's a wonderful blessing of reinsurance that our Savior, Jesus Christ, is the way and the truth and the life. But sadly for those who, like Felix, rejected, heard his calling, rejected this morning, and refuse to obey the saving gospel of Jesus Christ will also stand guilty before our holy God. You see, the Bible teaches that ignorance is no excuse. And everybody that's listened to the message this morning and all the days in the past who has heard the calling of Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 17, verse 30, uh, Luke writes and he says, The times of ignorance God overlooked. But now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man. And he refers to Jesus. We are, we are appointed and of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. I don't know about you, but I know surely where I'm going. May your troubles be less, your blessings more. May nothing but happiness come through your door in 2023. You see, because life without God is like an unsharpened pencil. It has no point. From our family to yours, have a peaceful holiday, safe travels, 
and always remember, he arose. If you want to answer the calling of Jesus Christ this morning and become a child of God, do it today while we stand and sing that closing song, Joe. Thanks.